Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the Junkyard Crawl in Berniston, Massachusetts at Berniston Auto Wrecking with a 1975 Olds Cutlass Supreme. Does anybody remember Oldsmobile? Well, it was only America's oldest car manufacturer starting out in 1897 and running through 2004, a full 107 years in operation. Now, Oldsmobile is a distant memory. Almost 20 years ago, GM pulled the plug on Olds. Crazy but true. But back in 1975, in the mid-70s, the Olds Cutlass was America's number one selling passenger car. Outselling Mustangs, Firebirds, Monte Carlos, Cordobas, the Cutlass was the number one seller in the U.S. marketplace. In 1975, 360,000 Cutlasses or Cutlai were sold. Half of them were two doors, which tells you a lot about the personal luxury market of the mid 70s. You know, fuel economy was very important as that was enforced on the world as gasoline became uh, scarce. But with that said, two door cars like this one were still very, very popular, 150,000 in 1975 alone. Now this is what we call the colonnade style of GM midsize car. And these arrived in 73 and went through 1977. Now the colonnade refers to the roof. And I'm sure, I think ancient Roman architecture guides talk about colonnades, columns, stiff members up and down kind of thing. And on this, the vertical member here, the B pillar, is about rollover protection and federal mandates on vehicle safety mandated that cars had to be able to flip over and not collapse the roof like a 61 Chevy bubble top, frankly. Uh, cars like that were pretty much easy to collapse and pancake. Well, these things were designed to roll over and stay safe, so they really overdid it. Now, you could not get a convertible. There was no, um, uh, it, basically the colonnade two-door had this hard fixed roof right here. Again, it was all about rollover standards in the mid-70s, which of course continued and also killed the convertible. We all know that 1976, the Cadillac Eldorado last convertible, uh, that was a, a reflection on the fact that convertibles were pretty much legislated out of existence or were they? They came back in the mid-1980s, but with that said, the Colnod body, it's all about that pillar. Monte Carlo had it, Grand Prix had it, it was a, a fixture on all mid-sized GM cars, including, of course, the Olds Cutlass. Now, this is a Johan model right here of a 75 Cutlass, and again, this one is a basic Cutlass. We can see it's got a larger rear window, still has that really uh, big B pillar, but this big open window right here, you can see that this has a block off. So again, the roof on the Cutlass Supreme is a different thing than it would have been on a basic Cutlass. But with that said, inside we see something very telling. Now this is a, a, a simplified model, but we can see that the Oldsmobile differentiated itself from its siblings over at Pontiac and Chevrolet uh, and Buick with these sort of sculpted quarter panels. And underneath, 1975, first year for a catalytic converter. And Johan, which was, you know, originally they built funny car models, fun cars, single exhaust, <laughs> and a catalytic converter, the sign of the times in 1975 when uh, fun was beginning to be ruled out of the game. But apparently uh, this one here was built out as just a regular car. Now these could have been had with optional captain's bucket seats that swiveled, believe it or not. This one has the bench, which is pretty much standard stuff. But inside, this one does have the automatic on the column. Yes, a three-speed manual is still the base transmission in Cutlass. It could be had. Four-speed manuals were just making their way out on 442. I don't think they were available anymore. Speedometer still goes to 120. That would change as we get into just another couple of years when the 85 mile hour mandate. And look at this interesting little device here. This is a block off plate here for some option that wasn't. So we have a stamped metal plate that looks like wood with the old Delta on it that's a block off plate for something that was not ordered. Uh, perhaps air conditioning, not sure. But again, this one here is a pretty typical car. And keep in mind too that the, the Cutlass uh, Salon came with, or Supreme, excuse me, came with this little marking right here, this little fake vent, which uh, <laughs> doesn't stay on too well. But again, this would have said Supreme as opposed to a basic Cutlass. Now under the hood of the Supreme is gonna be one engine, the base engine I should say, the 350. Uh, a regular Cutlass could still be had with an inline six, courtesy of Chevrolet. But this one here has the 350, and we can see it here, the four barrel standard fare. This is the Rochester Quadrajet, which of course is a spread bore underneath. This is the choke plate, that's a secondary flap for air, but underneath down low, single, the primaries are tiny, the secondaries are much larger. Crews on the primaries for good fuel economy. Meanwhile, the wide open secondaries give you the power you need when you gotta pass somebody. But again, standard cold air induction right here. This little tube here draws air from inside that bell mouth right there. 
and into the air cleaner by way of a flexible hose. So back in the 60s, that would have been called W30 outside air induction. Well, here it is standard fare. Again, cold air is denser air, better efficiency, better power, and it's better for fuel economy and, and power. Now keep in mind too, that 1975 was the final year for round headlights, but we see here a uh, second year for really extreme extended bumpers with the shock absorbers and these fallout panels here. In fact, the grills are designed to give with the bumper so that they spring right back in a low speed impact. But again, not pretty, but the, the age of the railroad type bumper was beginning right here. Now let's go back to 1973. And this is the beginning of the call nod body style. Again, we see it right here. This is the old full line, the Omega Nova based car, the midsize Cutlass, Cutlass Supreme. And again, we see the Cutlass Supreme has that exotic roof line right there. Same basic stiff, you know, vertical upright there to keep it from rolling over. Delta 88s, 98s, and of course the Toronado at the top. So a full line car maker, Oldsmobile, we knew you well. Who, who knew that uh, in uh, 2004, what, 31 years later, Olds would be gone with the wind. But inside here, we see the brand new Supreme. This is 1973, but similar beast to what we're looking at right now. But uh, and we see on the right here, it says, dramatically nude Colnod hardtop styling in both coupe and sedan models now makes Cutlass Supreme more of a little limousine in many ways, except in price. And uh, interesting to see that that was basically a way of satisfying government rollover standards uh, and uh, making sure they were compliant. Now, 1978, we know that GM's downsizing thing came on strong, and this is the downsized Cutlass that we uh, eventually got st not stuck with, but, but the big ones here, 1973 to 77. And we can see right here in 1978, this catalog, a changing world, it changes constantly. And it says here in the middle, new fuel economy compared to other cars in its class, EPA fuel economy estimates for Cutlass have been good in the past. <laughs> good enough, in fact, to help Cutlass become America's best-selling mid-sized car. And it is true. And it's interesting, too, we have uh, Michelangelo's, or Leonardo Vinci's, because he's been neutered, just like the Oldsmobile cars. We can see there's uh, nothing going on, uh, whatever. But yeah, so like the cars, uh, two strikes, no balls, or whatever they say in the baseball. With that said, this would have had a catalytic converter for the first time in 1975. The race was on to not have horsepower under the hood. But again, still very, very successful cars. Uh, like 150,000 of these things were built in 1975. Uh, two doors, 360 total. So the Tudor was just about as popular as the four-door. Uh, let's switch positions here, Super Shane, and we'll play uh, a little game of what's in the, the box. On this one, we'll open a door. And before we do that, we'll take a quick peek at this. This is the Consumer's Digest 1975 Autos Buyer's Guide. And there's the new Oldsmobile Starfire, I think that is. Of course, Buick also had a little version of that, the Sky, Sky Bird, Sky Hawk, something like that. Monza-based stuff. But here we have it right here, the old Cutlass. And it was the all-American best buy, General Motors best buy buy. Yup. And it says here, if the Oldsmobile Cutlass had over 4,000 4, pounds, that's two tons, ladies and gentlemen, and around 215 inches overall length is an intermediate size, inter, is an intermediate size car, well then, what is a full-size car? And it says here, the base 250 cube straight six come back, comes back as a standard power plant for the Cutlass. Last year, it was the hot 350 V8. That now comes standard only in the super luxury Cutlass Salon. And here it says on the right, all the Cutlass models have become status symbols in the suburbs, especially the Supreme. It has that snobby little odd-shaped opera window. And up here on the right, we see here, crazy but true, the corporate engine, the 260 V8, was standard on the salon. Small little Oldsmobile engine. And of course, the real horsepower nut can get more. And at Oldsmobile, not only the 350, but also a 455 with a four barrel. And it says here on the right, for its price, the Cutlass remains one of the world's greatest car values. And with a catalytic converter and electronic ignition it once again becomes a fairly economical car with 12 or 17 to 22 miles per gallon probably with an egg under the gas pedal but again you know Oldsmobile now gone but again very very popular car number one selling passenger car in the mid-1970s the old Cutlass okay let's get down to what's in the box the glove box that is and okay we have here oh, the owner's manual 1975 old Cutlass owner's manual and sometimes these have cool stuff in the back like Serta cards specifications for the car there's that catalytic converter and they describe of course the pellets inside of it and, and what that does basically it reheats the exhaust gas after it exits the engine to help to further Further burn off unburned hydrocarbons to clean up the tailpipe emissions. Town of Gill annual report, 1978. Look at this, 1978. So somebody uh, three years in 
uh, was a member of the, uh, the the town fathers, a town clerk, perhaps the town clerk. Do not remove. Uh oh, we got to bring this back after today. We're done shooting. Can't have that. And here we have a little scrapbook. Yeah. Oh, here's a little. Uh, okay. Oh, journeyman gas fitters license for Edward Smith. Uh, way back when. Interesting. I guess you had to be registered to pass gas. And, oh, is it a oh? It's a wallet. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I've never encountered this. Handcuffs? Okay, Mr. Smith, uh, you're a kinky lad. Yeah, you never know what you're gonna find in the box. Okay, well, I guess we'll, we'll quit while we're ahead. And uh, that's the story of the 1975 Old Cutlass Supreme, uh, once America's number one selling car for the 20th time in this video. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel. Uh, give us a like, share it with your friends, and be sure to ring the bell so that you're aware of the next video, and that's tomorrow morning.